Welcome back, everybody, to the bonus for episode 79. I just realized that that means that next week is not only going to be the finale of Deuteronomy and the finale of the Torah slash Pentateuch, but it's also but it's a be round number episode 80. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, yeah, that's perfect. So I want to start us out with something totally unrelated. Uh, and then move us back to some more related things. And so the the reason for this is that um, just the other day, uh, now that I'm back in Seattle, I met up with some old friends of mine from middle school, actually. And uh, I was telling one of them about this show. And he's like, oh, that sounds really interesting. And then he texts me a couple days later. And he's like, oh, I've listened to some drunk Bible study. It's really fun. Oh. Um, and he's like, you should check out... Uh, like wh- whatever it was, like season two, episode eight of Ancient Aliens, where they talk about angels in the Bible maybe being ancient aliens. And I was like, oh, that's funny, because at one point we do talk about some ancient alien theories about the Ark of the Covenant being extraterrestrial in origin, maybe some weapon of mass destruction or something. And he's like, oh, that sounds really cool, too. But it kind of inspired me to look up some of the stuff about aliens, because we never really talked about that specific part of the ancient aliens thing and i just think it's fun i like this kind of stuff yeah um, let's talk about aliens <laughs> let's talk about aliens for a bit take a little, little break from uh moses dying and talk about some aliens so okay so basically uh i was looking up stuff about ancient aliens specifically in genesis because uh, that's kind of the main time where ali- or aliens gosh see i'm already buying into it <laughs> where uh <laughs> Where angels were kind of mentioned and stuff like that. Remember, there were the Nephilim, who were you know the were talked about as like the the sons and daughters of God, and we were like, wait, what? Like mm. the sons of God and the daughters of women. And we've talked about this some before about were they giants? Were they angels? Were they what? Well, one thing we didn't entertain was that they could be aliens. So <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we did not. No, <laughs> no, we didn't. Uh, so. One of the things here is that, uh, where was it? They're talking about this. um, (laughs) Oh, right. One of the apocryphal books called the Book of Enoch. Uh, And the Book of Enoch expands Genesis 6, which talks about the sons of God, um, you know, marrying the daughters of man or whatever it was, that it goes on to explain that they were a group of 200 angels who were called watchers. Uh, who descended Hmm. to earth to breed with humans and their offspring were the Nephilim who were these giants who uh, consumed everything that men created. And when humans could no longer sustain them, they turned against the humans uh, and also taught humans about things like metallurgy and metalworking and cosmetics and sorcery and astrology and astronomy and meteorology. So So it's like, Dumbledore. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, but you'll notice that sorcery was in there and that's no good. That's not allowed. So then the idea yeah. is that God imprisoned them on the ground and then had the flood to eradicate the world of of these Nephilim. Uh, oh. <clears throat> so then people were saying, well, okay, check this out. They're called Watchers because they were aliens whose mission was to come to earth and just observe. So they got called the watchers. So they're saying this book of Enoch is actually like support that these were alien observers who came, made contact with humans, crossbred with them potentially and shared knowledge, which is why they were said to have shared, you know, metalworking and sorcery and astrology, which they would have thought of technology as sorcery probably. Uh, and but there's like half angels out there then half angel uh, slash a- alien babies. <laughs> right. Yeah, I guess I guess aliens uh, and also suggesting that potentially those two dudes who showed up back in Genesis who visited Lot in Sodom, that they were yeah. Ancient, yeah, yeah, yeah. ancient astronauts who did not like that city. And so what? they destroyed it with nuclear weapons. And that's what destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Whoa. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. that, they just didn't like the city. I mean, well, I don't know what the reasons were. Everyone but... was. Well, wait, were Sodom? Yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah, or like the city was. Everyone was doing each other, right, or that's, something. Right. Yeah. That remember, all the people wanted to do these 
astronaut aliens. Hot aliens. Yeah, these hot yeah. aliens. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that before. And Lot was like, no, do my virgin daughters instead. And they were like, dude, that's messed up of you, Lot. Also, we're going to nuke this yeah. place. So you should leave. Yeah. You know what? We're going to nuke it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I just thought that was interesting. This idea that there was interbreeding of aliens, too. Not just that they dropped off this weapon of mass destruction or, you know, whatever it was. <laughs> they dropped it off. Yeah. I did find myself a little confused with this explanation, though, where, like, if the flood was to wipe out the Nephilim, but because in Deuteronomy and Numbers, I think we've talked about people being descendants of Nephilim, and that wouldn't be possible if everyone had died unless Nephilim had also bred with Noah's family, which the people who defend this mm. theory are like, no, no, no. But Moses's family is pure. Like they, they didn't do that breeding with aliens. So now I'm like, I, I don't know, guys. I don't know what to believe anymore. <sighs> yeah, they Gosh. need to they need to think about that a little harder before they like put that out there as a theory. Mm, unless unless they were trying to kill all of these aliens by drowning them, but their alien technology or you know, they didn't need oxygen Ooh. the same way we did. So they actually lived through it but pretended not to and then snuck back in. And they pretended not to live go. through it. <laughs> you know, they all hid. We didn't live. We promise. Yeah. We died. <laughs> we're here, but we died. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're drowned. Blah, 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 yeah, they wrote little blah, notes blah, of like, drowning. oh, we're drowning. Blah, 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 blah. Super dead. Oh, exactly. so sad for us. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. I like that they wrote wow, out blah, blah, right. blah, 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 in the, in the yeah, notes. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. Exactly. Cool, cool. Yeah, my goodness. Uh, So, beep, sorry. I need to plug in my laptop because otherwise it's going to die and I'm going to lose the recording and then everyone's going to kill me. Yep, we will. <laughs> Mostly me, though. Mostly it's going to be, be Jace like, well, that would kill me if that happened. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? Figured I wouldn't risk it. Why can the I not kids plug in my laptop? What is going there? on? The kids are still yelling. How many games are they having? They're doing like okay. rugby or something. Maybe okay. basketball. Okay. Yes. All right. Done. Those are two very different sports, but all right. I know they're on a field that looks like a soccer field. It wouldn't be basketball, then I don't think. Okay. It definitely wouldn't be basketball. <laughs> all right, it's okay. So let's take a hard left turn and talk about circumcision, shall we? Oh, alien sure. circumcision. I just. Uh, it could be alien circumcision. Maybe. Sure, why not? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to look into this because we ran into, again, that whole thing of, like, circumcise your heart. And the two of you went off on this whole thing of, you know, cutting off calluses and stuff like that. But I just kept thinking about, like, but this is still associated with penises. Like, this is still yeah. bizarre. Yeah. This is still weird to me. And so I literally... <laughs> In the middle of the episode, I literally typed into Google, like, why circumcision? <laughs> and Gosh. What is circumcision? Boy. No, just why. Just why. Just why, why circumcision? circumcision? Yeah. I boy. went down a big rabbit hole specifically about this, like, religious, religiously based circumcision, which is really, okay. really fascinating, and especially, you know, uh, Jewish circumcision. So, um, so the official rules for Jewish circumcision is that it has to happen on the eighth day. Right. Oh, wow. Um, of being alive? Of being alive. Being alive. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we've covered that in, I think in Leviticus is when they talked about, specifically it's the eighth day when you need to, that's when you have the bris. And that's when your baby boy is circumcised. Now, there are a lot of apologetics that like to point out that, you know, the reason for this. Okay. So first of all, my first article was how circumcision shows God exists. Wow. Great place to uh, what start. A title. Excuse in my me? Opinion. What a title. <laughs> what? Because, <Okay>. because <clears throat> this author makes the argument that basically the reason why it's eight days is because on eight days, like the eighth day is when uh, the baby has the highest levels of two enzymes. Um, prothrombin and vitamin k so prothrombin and vitamin k these are the two enzymes that we need for blood clotting basically that if you have a vitamin k deficiency or a prothrombin deficiency that means that you have a hard time with blood clotting you're going to be more likely to bleed out if you have a very bad injury essentially and like so this author kind of makes the argument penis? that like well there's 
There's beginning. no way that Israelites <laughs> right, <Emily>. would have known. <laughs> yes, that is correct, Emily. This author makes the argument that, well, there's no way the Israelites would have known that this happens on the eighth day. So Yahweh telling them, do this on the eighth day, like Yahweh knows. And oh, they just kind of, okay. he gives okay. them the knowledge. Okay. Um that's and really course, that's a stretch right I'm there. Like, I'm like that's a stretch. It is a little back. bit of a stretch. I'm hold, I'm, I'm no, like Jace is throwing things. Okay, before Jace I, is throwing before things I continue, over there. before I continue, let me hear your your objections to that. Please. Theory. Uh, uh, okay. I mean, that's that's really like a stretch in my opinion. And somebody just like because came this, up with that, and somebody came up with the, that in their head, and they're like, "This is the, these correlated, so God must have known." Cool. This same article, honestly, the same article also addresses some of the most common. Uh, oh, responses all right. From skeptics. All right. So well, Jace, I want to hear. Hands. Okay. Cool. Tedeker is going to prove us wrong. See if there's a comeback <laughs> for this. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Basically, two things. One. And they're kind of the same, <laughs> but basically it's that, um, that like by that logic, then no other culture in the world at that same time would have made any medical discoveries because they didn't have Yahweh telling it to ever them. because they didn't have it. Right. That's true. That is true. Using that logic, you would assume that that's uh, true. And then my other one is like, yeah, they found it out because like they found out that the least babies died when they did this on the eighth day. And so they just said, yeah, let's do it yes. on the eighth day, <laughs> which that's is not, pretty messed yeah, up. Bad point. Okay. Well, basically, yeah. And he does address that where a skeptic is like, how do you come to that conclusion? Isn't it simpler just to say, yeah, we noticed that babies who were circumcised too early bled to death. Right. Um, yeah. And what? He, what do you got? There's <laughs> like no God says, knows. God knows. That's all that matters. First, God okay, knows. I'll just I'll just read. I'll just read. The author says this is a straw man. God didn't beam secret knowledge into Abraham or Moses's brain. All the passage says is that he instructed them to circumcise their male children on the eighth day. Why not later when they were 10, 20, or even thirty days old? Was it purely coincidental? Is that even plausible given the evidence? God knows about human anatomy because he's the creator. The Israelites were ignorant of modern science Jeez, and biology. Your they didn't know about prothrombin peaking on the eighth day because it wasn't discovered until thousands of years later. But God knew, and that's the point. This had to be revel- a revelation from the Lord. Okay, hang on, Jace, before you go <laughs> uh-huh. on. No, it's, just, uh-huh. it's, so, it's funny. It's funny, actually. Okay, because I was thinking, I was like, okay, if it's true that these enzymes spike on the eighth day, I'm like, Maybe you can make that argument that, I mean, of course, like <laughs> the unfortunate thing is, is that, of course, if you if you circumcise your baby too early and it dies, they're not writing about that in the Bible. All you know is magically they get this knowledge. Eight days is OK. Um, and then and then you can assume that it was divinely inspired. But here's the other thing is there's a lot of apologetic sites that are claiming that it's only on the eighth day that vitamin K spikes. Mm, okay. You know, that like the eighth day only. is the only day where a baby will have higher than 100% of its normal level of vitamin K and stuff like that. Now, of course, I was I didn't want to take this lying down. So I'm like, let's find some sources on this, shall we? Okay. And now there's a lot of other articles that do mention like, yeah, eighth day naturally spikes higher than normal. That's why you do it on the eighth day, yada, 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 yada. And like, you can circumcise babies earlier than that. But it's just now if it's in a hospital, they need to have a vitamin K Uh, injection essentially in order to promote clotting and stuff like that however there are literally no reliable sources that actually make that claim that the eighth day is the magical day like there's all these source there's all these kind of blogs that reference each other you know but there's no like i cannot find an original source you know like an actual study or anything like there's studies that show that like yeah as the baby gets older they they develop vitamin K, you know, and like that helps with their blood clotting. And then when they're earlier, they're not. But there isn't like a reliable backed up source that says, yeah, the eighth day. So like, OK, here's OK. Here's what's funny to me about it is <clears throat> just sort of the uh, absurdity of the way people can talk past each other when they try to have these kinds of things. Right. When when skeptics who are trying to argue there is no God and people saying, no, there is. Let me give you proof. It's like they're trying to speak. It's like they're speaking different Two languages. Two different languages. Right? Yeah. Or it's yes. like uh, or like that movie Sliding Doors, where they're each in a different reality, 
t- it, it, they don't talk to each other across realities. I don't know why I pulled that movie out of my head, but uh, <laughs> they're switch tracking. <laughs> yeah, like they're living in different realities, trying to have totally different conversations with totally different like basis for what you're making your argument on, uh, and just like completely talking past each other. And I guess the thing that I find so, I guess like frustrating and fascinating and sometimes funny and sometimes aggravating is just how it's like it, it, it's like it's just that that it's like if you want to talk about whether you think god is real or not that's fine I, i'm not arguing one way or the other about that but just when you try to use this one type of logic and then also throw in this other type when it's convenient like with that example right of like the one person says well that's just they found that fewer of their babies died if they did it on the eighth day so that's what they started doing and then the other person goes right but if they had to do that god couldn't have just told them that it happens on the eighth day and the first person's like yeah that's no that's my point that god didn't say that that didn't know that happened this just got told later on you know and it's like they're talking past each other it's like yeah but how would they have known right away if God hadn't told them that? It's like, no, you're you're like talking about two different realities and just you can't use the same logic to talk to each other and have that conversation. At least it doesn't seem like it. Yes. Uh, so I have more things to say about circumcision okay, please. related oh, to this. It. Because now, oh, because there's also other theories that the circumcision that happened back then is maybe not the same circumcision that we think about now. That's What does that now. mean? Well, a couple things. Well, actually, so sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me keep addressing the eight-day thing. There's some other people who make the argument that this follows the same pattern of waiting for something to become clean again, Hmm. as we've seen with newborn animals. So, for Uh. instance, like it's instructed in Leviticus that when a newborn cow or sheep comes into the world that it has to stay with its mother for seven days and then it can be sacrificed from the eighth day onward so some people argue like this was just a ritual sense of yeah it takes seven days after you're born until you're clean again ritually clean and then you can be quote unquote your your force can be quote unquote sacrificed Mm. in that way to God, and that's why it's the eighth day thing. I suppose if so I there's did that. Think I thought al- that was interesting. If the alternative was sacrificing the firstborn, then I'm like, okay, I'd be willing to take circumcision to not have the firstborn be killed, partly because that would be me too. But you know, I'm like, okay, <laughs> if that's my other option, sure. Now I'm now I'm I'm on board. But if it's not, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. not so much. No. There's also some other theories that okay. Jewish circumcision, at least, didn't start out with complete removal of the foreskin, that it may have actually just been, you just had to bleed, essentially. And so it would have just been like a cut on huh. the front of the foreskin so that it Why? scarred and then it did bleed instead of a total amputation. Um, Why? It's like a mark. Yeah, that there's that possibility. And supposedly but, like, later... What's the fascination with genitals here? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what is yeah. God? What, what what's the point of God? I well, I couldn't. We t- could I certainly r- couldn't talk tell for you. hours about that. <laughs> but, but because the, there is the argument that, like, yeah, they would have figured out that trying to make an amputation on your newborn would have been way too risky. It's already like you already have a terrible infant mortality rate. Right? And right. why would you do trying anything to that would do make that? that worse? Yeah. Why would you do anything? You know, why wouldn't you just do this kind of like ritual little cut? Um, Hmm. Wow. So now then I went down another rabbit hole oh boy. because in reading that theory about how it may have just been a cut and later on it turned into, no, we need to remove the whole foreskin. That was what was fascinating is like the point that then total amputation became required. And yeah, there's all these. And then it became not just total amputation, but it's like everything. Like you, you have to do a perfect job. Everything has to be gone. Every little piece of tissue has to be gone. Okay. Then I learned about this thing that I actually knew about already, but then I read up on it a little bit more that like there's this practice, particularly among Orthodox Jews, that the rabbi who performs the bris, uh, there's this other part of it called the metzitza, which uh, literally means oral suction. And it basically means that once they cut all the tissue off, then the rabbi is supposed to use his mouth to get uh-huh. rid of the rest of the blood. Um, this is a practice that started, I believe, in the 1800s, maybe the 1700s. The, the argument being that, you know, this is what keeps the baby safe and prevents them from bleeding out. Now, of course, 
by judging by both of your faces, yeah. you can see yeah. that it's like, no, 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 this is not okay. Like this feels like a kind of flimsy excuse for at the very least child abuse. Mm. And then also yeah. secondly, surely there's just much better ways of doing this. Now, it is a very controversial practice. It still happens to this day, mostly in Orthodox communities. It's mostly become controversial now because they've discovered that like it's probably not the, the best thing to do. It's not the best thing to do. Also, like most of the population, rabbis are humans and humans have things like HSV, right. you know, yeah, even right. if they don't have any symptoms. And so it's a perfect way of like transmitting these bad diseases to a baby whose immune system can't handle them. Right. Um, and now that's become even more controversial in that like, you know, some kind of Jewish governing bodies are kind of like, well, what if we either implement like a consent form or a testing system, like make sure all the rabbis get tested. What? And then the rabbis are like, but if you tested all the rabbis who do this, then we wouldn't have enough rabbis to actually actually be able to perform this. And huh. so, yeah, it's just, it's a really fascinating thing. Yeah. A little bit gross. It makes me uncomfortable just... on a lot of levels, to be honest with you. Seriously fascinating. See, I don't have a penis, so I don't exactly know like what, you know, it, 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 just more of the moral and ethical implications of all of this. But I, I right. have yeah. most of the men in my life really do not like circumcision anymore and i think it is kind of they going used out of to fashion. back in the day they loved it and now they don't like it anymore <laughs> well no i mean i think that yeah it, it is interesting like i'm always surprised if a friend of mine has a kid and they circumcise their male child i'm like R really like you would oh is that still a thing that people do <laughs> But yeah, yeah i was i'll be honest i was a little surprised when my sister when my nephew was born um yeah she, the way she tells it is that like the nurses came up to her and like, asked her like are you going to have your child circumcised or not like do we need to schedule him essentially for circumcision yeah. and she was like I literally had not even thought of it um, mm. and of course I was like how can you not think about it <laughs> like, right. how can you yeah. how can that just how can that just like breeze past your mind um, but yeah well, people people still do it oh, it's you know it's it's everyone kind of trots out the whole like, oh, but it's shown to reduce like HIV transmission, but there's kind of some dodgy science on that. Um, yeah, exactly, yeah. I think. No. And yeah. yeah anyway, yeah, we're not judging no. anybody's penis, honestly, here on this podcast, whether no, you your penis is your penis, or not. Your penis is great. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. You know what? We will, we accept people here on Drunk Bible Study, regardless of the state of their genitals at all. Uh, which makes us a <laughs> yeah, lot more. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's absolutely. a good. Thank you. That's Jace. a really good policy Thank to you. have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, you could have crushed stones, or you know, any number of things that you can't go into the the uh, inner sanctum of the uh, the. What's what's the word I'm looking for? A tabernacle. The tabernacle. tabernacle. Yeah. You can't go in there, but you can come here, uh, and that's oh, uh, I something love that. I love about this. Yeah. Um, I like yes. Wow. All right. Boy. Well, All right. Well, with with that, uh <laughs> we hope that uh we hope everyone made it through this bonus episode and um uh can go on in your day and think about things like aliens, uh nice things like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh Perfect. We hope to see you around the Facebook group Drunk Bible Study Fans and Fellowship where we can talk with you more about all of these things. And we will see you next week for the grand finale of Whew. Deuteronomy.